In Bertie County, dreams live for a long time. Gregory Tyler's dream is tied to this intriguing place, Hope Plantation, where she lives it nearly every day. The dream began when her father was just a small child, riding around the country with his father in their Model T. They rounded a corner and the young boy caught first sight of the house that would become his life's obsession. It just kind of took his breath away and he remembered saying to himself, one day I'm gonna fix that. It would be years before the adult Jack Tyler, by then a successful antique dealer, could begin his work. Meanwhile, years of occupation by tenant farmers and more years of neglect made restoring the house a daunting task. With the help of the county and my mother and all the other people who've been involved with the restoration since the 1950s, by golly, he got it fixed. The house was more than just Jack Tyler's dream. It was built by David Stone, one of North Carolina's early governors, who named his plantation Hope, after Hope Parish, his mother's ancestral home in Derbyshire, England. It was a relatively large mansion for the times, and the Stones lived in the manner expected of planter aristocracy. The home was patterned after one Stone had seen in Philadelphia. The family quarters were on the first floor, and the public rooms, including his office and library, were on the second. And this would have been his own personal retreat. He had an amazing collection of books for a man from this time period. Over 1,400 volumes. The top map that you see over here is the 1808 map that was actually the first actual survey of the state of North Carolina. This was something that David Stone very much wanted to have done. He personally financed it. It all had to be done by surveyors walking the entire state of North Carolina. David Stone's wife of 23 years, Hannah, died in 1815. During restoration, his grief was revealed by a handwritten note found penciled onto the wall behind a shelf of books. It's written, Oh, for the past gone days when I could gaze at my wife. The governor married again the next year, and by 1818, he too was dead. The plantation was sold by his only son in 1836. It would be almost a century and a half before Jack and Margaret Tyler entered the picture, heading up the efforts to restore the Stones Plantation House. Artifacts typical of their life have been lovingly placed throughout the house, including such mementos as a commemorative handkerchief mourning the death of George Washington, and a Yankee clock, which fetched the princely sum of $75, more money than any of his other furnishings, at the estate sale following the governor's death. The Tyler's family life was so entwined with the dream of hope that it was sometimes hard to separate the two. Jack even gave unofficial tours to curious folk who showed up at the old plantation home while he was there puttering around. People used to remark, that was so nice of David Stone to show us around his house. Never thinking, of course, that the governor had been dead for almost 150 years. Today, of course, it's his daughter giving the tour. Here you're in the front hall where you would have just entered from the, um, the front doors. It's a mirror reflection of the back hall, same proportions, same ceiling height, and really been, been very impressive when you walked in for the first time and saw this magnificent arch and its keystone up here. The floor cloths that you see down here are typical of the time period. They were normally used in entrance ways and dining rooms. All houses of the time period would have been multifunctional. And with this house, because of his prominence, you have people coming and going. Your public rooms would have been the entrance hall and the back hall. 
say if you had a smaller group you wanted to bring up to the drawing room that they would fit more comfortably in that room. The dining room with its inviting place settings makes it seem as if we were expected for dinner. Several pieces of furniture in here are typical of the Roanoke River Valley School of Cabinet Making that was thriving about that time. Here we're in the room that is being interpreted as the family parlor. This would have been a multifunctional room that the family would have been using on a daily basis to take meals. Perhaps Mrs. Stone with her children might have been teaching the girls how to do needlework. The little chair here actually belonged to David Stone's, one of his grandsons. That family connection, it's great to have it in here. On the wall over here is a small copy of a portrait of David Stone. Uh, this was actually done from a miniature locket that he had done when he was in Philadelphia sometime between 1800 and 1803. In the 17th and 18th century South, kitchens were located outside for several reasons. To avoid heat buildup in the main house because that's where the heavy duty cooking was done. There was also concern about fire. And it provided a separate place for slaves to do the cooking. The outdoor kitchen at Hope has been reconstructed on the site of the original. Of course, too much heat and cold were continuing concerns in all homes of that time. Because Hope was so big, this inspired some ingenious temperature control techniques. The, the doors are on rising butt hinges, which means that they're cut at such an angle that once they're open, when working properly, will shut all the way without any assistance. When all the doors were opened, the stairway served as an efficient ventilating system. Of course, when all else failed on those torrid summer days, there was always the roof. You can see for miles up here, take in the sweep of land that once encompassed the plantation and look out toward the distant but not visible Roanoke River. Hope today is a place of dreams realized which is helpful to consider in the context of one expert's comment from just over 40 years ago that the unrestored Hope Plantation House was hopeless. Clearly, the Tyler family, the members of the historic Hope Foundation, and others dedicated to the restoration of Governor Stone's home did not agree. And our state is the beneficiary.